Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we'll go through the memorandum, the step-by-step -step guide on how I created the memorandum for the um, drive shaft, the part that you see on the screen at the moment. Uh, and just to introduce myself, if you don't already know, my name is Dr. Lucas de Plessis and I'm a senior lecturer in the Department of Mechanical and Aeronautical Engineering and uh, this video is specifically uh, made for the MOW217, that's Manufacturing and Design module for 2023. So if we look at the drive shaft assembly, um, this now shows the components that get connected to the drive shaft, that's what you see on the screen at the moment. I can quickly run through the items, so here on the right hand side there's uh, a few components to secure this deep groove ball bearing onto the drive shaft if i can jump back so we're talking about this end over here that's where those components fit into um, and then there's also a pinion gear with a lock ring a shoulder bolt and a grub screw or set screw that secures the shoulder bolt in the lock ring um, that next onto on the drive shaft so this is in this area over here this specifically that shoulder bolt goes through this hole and the pinion gear sits on this portion of the shaft okay um, and then on this end, there's a floating bearing assembly. There's another, or not bearing assembly, just a floating bearing. Um, the locating bearing is the small one. The floating bearing is this one. And this locating and floating bearings are something that we will uh, discuss in class later on. So um, the important thing to note is that this bearing sits on this diameter over here okay and then on the left side the other end of the drive shaft there's a few components to connect the electric motor to the drive shaft um, and those components are the um, the collet nut let me just hide that quickly so the collet There's the collet nut. So this portion of the shaft is then threaded. It has uh, an imperial or an American screw thread machined or tapped onto this portion of the shaft. Um, as a result of that, there's an undercut uh, between the tapped portion of the shaft and the rest of the shaft. And then... Um, holding or clamping onto the motor shaft is this collet okay that's also that's a bought out item um, let me just hide the, the motor and the two screws okay so the collet fits into this hole and um, this taper angle or this taper is important to clamp the collet onto the shaft okay so if i can jump back so we're talking about this side of the um, shaft so that diameter is tapped the screw thread on that there's the undercut there's the uh, taper and then the hole in which the collet locates you see on the screen at the moment is the memorandum drawing the one that I suggest for this component and um, these dimensions um, highlighted in pink um, these were already given on the dimensionless well strictly speaking semi-dimensioned uh, PDF drawing that I also made available okay so uh, we now we will now go about it systematically to dimension the rest of the features on the part and I will go through it step by step and explain each decision. Alright, so while we are at detail 
view one, we might as well discuss the the dimensions that are not highlighted and why I selected um, to add them to this view. Right. So first of all, okay. So the front part, the the screw thread or the tap portion is dimensioned. Um, this chamfer on both ends. So on the other end, there's also a chamfer. We don't need to dimension it then. In other words, in detail view two, it's already done here in detail view one. Okay, the length of the screw thread, that fillet, as well as the undercut and the, uh, the, uh, the length of the screw thread, undercut and the fillet portion is then also indicated. All right, so we need a diameter for this portion of the shaft, this di diameter 10. Let me just show you on the component. Okay, so yeah, this diameter needs to be specified. If we want to measure what the size is, we will use the manipulator workbench. Um, the step file of the drive shaft I've already imported into FreeCAD and I've created a body from that step file. So uh, you don't need to do the creation of the body. You can simply do the measurements on the drive shaft. But be that as it may, um, I just did that as a, as a matter of routine. Right, so with the manipulator workbench open, we click on both calipers and then we want to measure... Okay, in this case, we want the radius, so I want that radius, and it's radius 5. It's good practice to even do the trivial calculations, because if you do it in your head, you may make a, a mistake. It's easy to make a mistake. All right, so the radius is 5, and we are interested in the diameter, so we multiply it by 2, and that's 10. Okay, so if we now go back to our memorandum, Okay, I've indicated that that diameter is uh, 10. I've indicated the leader lines over here. And I've indicated the diameter plus the tolerance of plus minus comma 2. It's a loose tolerance. There's no components that interface with this portion of the shaft. So uh, plus minus comma 2 tolerance is adequate. You could go bigger. Um, Plus minus comma four even I wouldn't go much bigger than that, and also not much smaller than plus minus comma one. That's now for the tolerance, right? So um, next we will we want to show. Um, let's talk about these lengths. Okay, so um, if I can just jump back to the part. So these two flats, and I did explain that in my previous video. So this flat over here and this flat over here, if we look at it from the top, yes. So that's for a spanner. That's for a, yeah, a normal spanner to secure the shaft when you, do, when you tighten or loosen the collet nut or the cap, the um, nylock nut on the other end. Okay, so that's what that's for. So uh, my strategy was um, was to dimension the total length from the end of the shaft. So this length over here. And then dimension the spaces to or, or this portion of the um, shaft. Okay, if I can show you on the... So my, my strategy was to dimension this portion and this portion. Give it a total length from the end of the shaft to that uh, shoulder. And then dimension that length over there and this length over here. Okay. Now the reason why I decided that is because there's a, there can be a buildup of tolerances. And I wanted, I wanted the flats of the spanner to be symmetric symmetrically or symmetric uh, in this portion of the shaft so that was my strategy this is by no means the only uh, strategy that you could follow but that was the strategy that I followed okay so um, 
it's very simple to take a measurement so we will uh, we can select that diameter and this diameter over here and the length is 15.5 and so what I did on the memorandum Sorry, I, me I measured this 15,5 here now. Okay, what I actually wanted to measure was the distance from that diameter to this diameter over here. Okay, and that distance is 29,5. Okay, so if we look at the memorandum, so that's that 29,5, and here you can now see... Um, Okay, if that's this is this 29,5 and I gave it a tolerance of plus minus comma 2 which is a fairly loose tolerance I wouldn't go much smaller than uh, plus minus comma 1 and plus minus comma 5 would be my upper limit okay so um, now next we can measure uh, let me just delete a few of these measurements okay so what we can do now is measure from that diameter to this face that's 1,5 in the x direction okay x direction is the red direction the red shaft or axis okay so that's why it's 1,5 that's the dimension we will put on the drawing and if we measure from that face to that face once again the x dimension is 1,5 okay so then it's very simple to add those two tolerances or dimensions with the tolerance and here I wouldn't go I wouldn't deviate much from plus minus comma 2 um, yeah, if you make it plus minus comma 5, then you in any case lose the symmetry that we have achieved now. Uh, what I mean is if you say 1,5 plus minus comma 5, that distance can uh, vary between 2 millimeters and 1 millimeter. Okay, and uh, the same on this side. I mean, and that would be clearly visible if you when you manufacture the part. So a plus minus comma two deviation on both ends is uh, would wouldn't be that easy to um, to notice, right? So um, now uh, you will notice that I've added this reference dimension in brackets eleven. So that's just to make it also easy for the manufacturer um, without having him having to pull out his calculator so uh, we can quickly measure that distance from that face to that face and that's 11 okay so um, yeah and it's a reference dimension on the drawing because if we now put a tolerance over here and we put then we've got we've over constrained this drawing okay the fact the reason the fact that I've added this total length of 29 and a half and I, I therefore cannot have a, a full chain of dimensions plus the overall dimension so that's why I selected this 11 to be a reference dimension and I'm not really worried about the tolerance on this 11 um, because the there's ample space between the faces and where the spanner will fit okay okay so then next um, let's look at um, we, we are now going to dimension the distance between the flats and obviously there we will want to do a, a location of those two flats and for that we will need datum A so let's now look at um, how we dimension this datum A okay and I mentioned that also in the previous video but the material that the material that this uh, part is made of is um, 
uh, it's a bought out stainless steel shaft with a diameter 12 H6 tolerance. Okay, so we are definitely not going to do anything, any machining or any manipulation of that shaft. Um, you're welcome to look at the previous video. So what I just did here is I put the diameter 12 H6 in brackets as a reference dimension. So there's no machining needed. I've added these tolerances. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, the software that I used didn't allow me to put the, the bracket over here. But that doesn't matter. Um, the dimension is in brackets. It's a reference dimension. And then what is important is in line with the uh, dimension line. I've in line with the dimension line. I've got this leader line uh, that leads to the to the datum A box. Okay. And now once I've done that, I can now very successfully uh, locate these two flats with a symmetry tolerance okay but i'll get back to that let's first quickly measure the distance between the flats okay so if i click on that flat and on this flat it will be eight millimeters or eight millimeter millimeters um Okay, so um, I've selected a plus minus comma one tolerance, so a little bit tighter than the plus minus comma two that I generally use for unimportant dimensions. Um, so, um, yeah, it as I said, a standard eight millimeter flat spanner should fit onto this. So you could also consider doing a plus comma one minus comma three even if 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 you wanted to uh, but i wouldn't go much bigger than eight comma one uh, the chances are that the the spanner will then not fit okay so if you want to use a symmetrical tolerance plus minus comma one can work if you want to do a an unsymmetrical tolerance then i would uh, consider plus zero minus zero comma four okay and then what is important also uh, we can now very successfully locate it symmetrically relative to a uh, so let's quickly do that All right we want the highlighter okay so in line with the dimension line there is the leader line to the tolerance frame uh, we use a symmetry symbol 0, 0,2 relative to A. Alright. And that then um, concludes detail 1. Okay, so let's quickly have a look at um, this detail 2. So in detail 2, we are dimensioning this hole over here. Okay, the size of the hole plus the orientation of the hole. So in order to measure the diameter of the hole, you need to be careful. Uh, you cannot just simply, you cannot just simply say, measure the radius and click on the radius. Then you get a funny radius of 3,1, which is not the correct radius. The reason why you need to be careful is because this, yeah, if you look at this view over here, Yes, there you can see the it it make the the circumference of that hole makes a, a radius in the vertical direction as well as in the horizontal direction. So the the proper way of doing it is to select this point over here. You need to zoom in a little bit and hover your mouse until the point is highlighted. Here we go. Click that point. The same on this side. And there you can see the distance is 6,1 uh, to machine precision. So that's the diameter. Okay. And uh, what, what we also then need is the tolerance. 
it will be an H7 diameter. So let's quickly have a look at our tolerance finder spreadsheet. Okay, so in our tolerance finder spreadsheet, we will type in 6.1. And uh, the H7 was already selected. If it's not selected, you need to click on this drop down menu and select H7. The shaft diameter is unimportant at this stage uh, because we only want to specify the hole. And here you can see 6.1 plus 15 plus 0. So if we look at our uh, memorandum drawing, uh, here you can see the diameter 6,1 H7 plus 15 plus 0. Okay, and now what I did here is I added the perpendicularity tolerance of diameter 0 0.05 relative to datum A. So in other words, if we can just think about that, datum A is the center axis of this shaft. Okay, this portion over here, let me highlight it quickly. That is our datum A. Okay, and what I did here is um, the center axis of the hole of the 6,1 hole needs to be perpendicular. This is actually nice. One can see it a little bit better on this section view. So um, the center axis of the the center axis of the 6,1 hole needs to be perpendicular to this center axis of the shaft to within a diameter of comma zero. 5 okay we actually don't need the symmetry uh, tolerance relative to datum a because the tolerance zone is a cylinder of diameter 0 0.05 okay as indicated in this detail view and what is important this cylinder is in line with datum a okay now datum a Item A is highlighted on this view over here with this green line. Okay, the, the tolerance zone cannot sit, for example, over here. Okay, it, it has the, the center of the cylinder of the tolerance zone is exactly in line with datum A. So that's why this symmetry tolerance is actually not needed. I do have the also the length, the total length of the shaft on this view let me just show you so this is this 150 plus minus comma 2 um, i'm not going to show how to measure it it's straightforward using the manipulator workbench right let us uh, discuss the rest of the detail drawing um, we've now we now have the size of the hole the tolerance and the orientation of the hole now i said earlier the location the position of the hole is determined with these with this chain of um, dimensions okay so from the end it's um, 11 comma 5 plus minus comma 1 plus the 23 plus minus comma 1 okay that's where the center of the hole is from the end and then this shoulder the distance between the center of the hole and the shoulder is 5 plus minus comma 1 okay so i can quickly let me just show you how to measure that quickly so okay so we've got 6 6 comma 1 rather um so what one can do is very simple you can measure from that point to for example this face over here okay and then you must look it's the red axis and that's x x is 11 uh, 15.45 so we will have to do a little bit of a calculation 15.45 we know that the diameter of the hole is 6.1 so if we want the distance if we want the distance 
from this face to the center of the hole we need to take the 6,1 which is the diameter divided by 2 and add it to this 15.4 okay so let's quickly do that we can say this cell equals the diameter divided by 2 and then the distance will be that 15.4 plus the 3.05 18.5 okay, so i had to do i had to make a correction um this drawing that you see on the screen was created with other dimensions of the hole and the location and so on so that's the reason for the difference uh, but anyway so the correct distance is 18,5 and 9,5 the distance between this shoulder and the center of the hole okay so the important thing is for you to dimension or to specify the tolerances now what i did here specifically because it's a chain dimension so this 11,5 or the 18,5 links onto the 11,5 and both of them have a uh, one com oh, 0 0,1 tolerance so the position of the center of the hole relative to the end of the shaft can vary with plus minus comma two and i didn't want to make that too big uh, to just ensure that we don't have any interference between the pinion and this shoulder if i can quickly show you the drive shaft assembly so we are now We are now looking at this portion over here. Okay, there's ample clearance, uh, but uh, you must remember that the length of the pinion also has a tolerance. So it's good practice to have ample clearance. Plus, when, when this gets manufactured, there is going to be a fillet in this corner. And that fillet is specified on the uh, in the notes of the drawing max r comma r zero comma four unspecified fillet radii. So um, it's good practice to have ample clearance, and that's why uh, I don't want to make these tolerances too big. Okay. Um, yes. All right. And even this tolerance as well from the hole to the to the uh, shoulder i didn't want to make the tolerance too big uh, you could consider making the distance longer although you don't have the privilege to change the step file it is what it is so anyway this is my recommendation all right so let's carry on so while we are at it we, are, we might as well specify the orientation of this shoulder and you will notice that what i selected to do is i selected to specify that shoulder as perpendicular to within 0 0.05 relative to a and combined with that it's a tight tolerance combined with that i've got a surface texture of 1.6 okay so the reason for that is because that face is where the um the bearing is going to sit okay so an alternative arrangement would be to say okay um would, would be to specify an alternative would be to specify this diameter 8 where the bearing sits as a datum okay let me rather use my pen for this so this is an alternative that would also work okay so let's do it in black okay so an alternative would be to say okay no i want this center axis to be uh, datum b for example okay and to then instead of having a, an a here to say uh, make it perpendicular to within 50 micron with b okay so we can just check this diameter quickly um it's a radius of four so on our spreadsheet it will be eight okay and then what we can do also is um we can say it's eight and we are now interested in the shaft dimension which is going to be a g6 tolerance 
and there you can see minus 5 minus 14 so if we go back to our memorandum drawing I just want to get my highlighter here so there you can see what I did was I specified diameter 8 G6 minus 5 minus 14 micron and combined with that it's a tight tolerance G6 I've got a good surface texture of that surface and also what I also did was I specified the cylindricity of that diameter as 10 micron or 0.01 millimeter um, okay now let me quickly just show you again the bearing specification and where this R0.2 max comes from and it's important to specify that fillet radius because all unspecified fillet radii to be R0.4 max and we want something that is smaller so we have to or that is different from the 0.4 so we have to specify that. So looking at the information sheet of this bearing, the 628-8-2Z, if we scroll down, okay, it gives you the dimensions of the bearing, and then at the bottom here, the abutment dimensions, RA max is 0 0.2. If I can just show it with my hand quickly, 0 0.2, and this is RA over here. Okay, so that would then explain why on the memorandum, we specify that this is a 0.2 max radius. Okay, so let's quickly now look at the tapped hole. Um, if I can jump back here. So if I make this a bit more transparent. Okay, so we've got a tapped hole. M5, that's where this um, this grub screw or set screw uh, fits in. Okay, so I'm talking about this. Let's just have a look quickly. Um, it's this one here. That is a set screw or grub screw and that fits into a tapped hole. Okay, and it's a blind hole. In other words, it doesn't go all the way through. This is a through hole, uh, the one that we dimensioned earlier, but the tapped hole is a blind hole. So we need to specify the drill depth as well as the tap depth. Okay, so let's quickly take a few measurements. Um, we want this distance from here. Sorry, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's just delete that quickly. So we want that probe from the center to the center of the drill hole that's 15 millimeter millimeters okay and here you can see the drill depth is 15 and I gave it a tolerance of comma 2 once again definitely not much smaller than comma 2 and also not much bigger than comma five okay and now the tap depth that's an uh, what well the tap dimension is m5 by 0 0.8 the 0 0.8 being the um, pitch of the thread i can quickly show that so for a five millimeter nominal diameter uh, the pitch is 0 0.8 Okay, so with that specified, uh, all we now need to do is specify the tap depth. And in this scenario, I would recommend using a minimum dimension. If the tap depth is deeper than this, it's not a problem. Um, but definitely not less than 8 millimeters. You could also do a tolerance, then make it a loose tolerance such as plus minus comma 5. Uh, that's what I would recommend. Okay, so let's just quickly measure that distance. Very simple. So we will measure from this diameter to this diameter and it's 8 millimeter. 
Okay. Okay, so the last part of this drawing, the last feature features that need to be dimensioned um, are these are this hole and the taper over here. Okay, so the hole depth you can easily measure and you will notice I've given it a quite a loose tolerance plus minus comma three. Okay. Uh, just an important point uh, when you specify the depth of a hole you you sh uh, it's a it's the rule is to specify it to to this point over here not the tip of the um, angled hole okay not we don't use this lighter one we use the this tip over here or this end over here the end of the straight flank of the hole okay so i'm not going to show you how to measure the depth i've shown that now a number of times it's straightforward 21 comma 3 plus minus comma 3 all right now the diameter 4 comma 3 and it's an h7 so once again tolerance finder very simple to find this plus 12 zero tolerance okay um, and you will notice over here i did not specify any concentricity or coaxiality of this hole so in other words our rule um, that we've noted over here all diameters to be coaxial or concentric to diameter comma two relative to a will then apply to this hole over here okay and that's fine i think well that's what i wanted to use if you did specify a concentricity it's also not wrong but i think for this application this would uh, 0 comma 2 would actually suffice Okay, what is important with an H7 tolerance is um, the surface texture again. Okay, and note the triangle is pointing towards the direction of where there is material. There is material below the line on this side, but it's pointing towards the distance, to, towards the material. It's not pointing away from the material. Okay. Now let's talk about the um, this taper, the sixty degree taper. Um, let's just first of all look at how to measure that angle. Let's see if we can do that quickly. Okay, so it's on the other end of the shaft, so we'll have to measure an angle. And we will select this line and this face. Let's see what it does. It gives us an angle of 30 degrees. So I just checked now and you can actually measure the angle of this cone also just by selecting the surface of the cone and then a flat surface, which will, this, will, will be this surface over here. And if we zoom out, we can see the angle is given a 60 degree, 60 degrees. Okay, so on the memorandum, okay, so it should be in a box, theoretically exact, 60 degrees. And then what we can do is we can say it should have an angularity con uh, constraint of 0, 0,1 relative to A. Now here, I actually broke the rule. The arrow should be on the inside, okay. What I mean by that is, but I didn't have enough space to add the tolerance um, on the inside. What I mean is, it should have been, it should have looked like something like this. The arrow should be pointing in the direction of where there is material. The material is on the outside. Um, and then you will have a leather box, angularity 0 0.05 or 0 0.1 relative to datum A. Okay, I didn't have enough space to add this here, and that's why I added it here. Okay, okay, so what is also, 
I didn't mention it earlier, but this diameter 4,3 hole needs a cylindricity of 10 micron. If you look at the tolerance, the size tolerance, the 10 micron is um, in the same order of magnitude. And then um, also just the what we do want is this cone to have a good surface texture. So we have a 1,6 as well as a depth. The depth isn't too important. Um, we've got a tolerance of plus minus comma 1. Um, but that then fully um, dimensions or dimension the uh, this drawing. Okay, the notes were already given to you. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's this exercise. I do hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something from it. Thank you very much for watching.